What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys are having a great holiday uh, weekend. It's coming to a close as we get ready to get down to business, and that would be the NFL. Oh, my God. Come Thursday night, we've got the Rams versus the Buffalo Bills, and I'll be right here live streaming that game because... Because, hey, you know, they're two of the teams that people talk about going to the Super Bowl. But one of those teams is going to start out 1-0, and okay? And the other one's going to start out 0-1. So it's going to get interesting. You know, people forget that a lot of these teams got to play other teams and will lose games. So when you start thinking about the 49ers and the Rams and the Cardinals, they're going to be having a circular firing squad. They're going to kind of knock each other off and things. Uh, the Cowboys, of course, we are excited to have Jason Peters in the building. And I have to say, um, uh, it's something about the Cowboy colors. It's something about the Cowboy colors because that doesn't look like the same Jason Peters that I remember with the Eagles. That that doesn't look like this. Look at it. He, he look at I, I don't know if the Cowboys got those, you know, older man shirts. You know, I got some of them. I just don't have them in cowboy stuff on there. But they're like slimming shirts. They basically are tapered to hide the belly to make you look better than you really are. You know, they have some other ones here that make your arms look really, really big. You know, so it's kind of like the women with the, the padded bras and stuff and, you know, the collagen and stuff that they do and the, uh, uh, the, the botulism that they put in their lips. You know, you kind of fake people out to what the real thing is. But I swear... Jason Peters, he don't look like he's 40 years old. Does he look like he's 40? Look at how trim the beard is. You know, look look at how nice the skin looks on there. Look at the shoulders. He looks like, mm, okay. And I don't see the belt. Well, we can, pull, let's pull it up a little. Let's see if we can move it up a little bit more. I don't see, do you see a belly? That don't look like Jason Peters. That looks like Jason Peters who actually does not look like he's in bad shape i mean look they ain't no i don't see the belly seriously jason peter look good all right and um he's already having his impact felt on the field he actually practiced today because you know we talking about we practice here, now i supposed to be the franchise you know, we talking about we practice talking about practice. Not, not the game not the game I mean, that listen, i love we talking we about talking practice. about practice not a game and not already, a game not a game jason peters is working with Tyler Smith, helping to mentor him. And this is one of those key things and reasons that you want to have a guy um, out there like Jason Peters, who's been there, who's going to the Hall of Fame to help teach and, and pass the torch on. And it's kind of interesting because at first you think, well, Jason Peters, you know, being an 11-year veteran of the Eagles, that maybe there'd be some animosity because he has, you know, at times trashed the Cowboys. You know, he, he's basically trashed the Cowboys. He had the opportunity, as he put it, he said he had options to play elsewhere. So if you really and truly hated the Cowboys and there were other opportunities, you could have easily just said, you know what, I'm going to go someplace else. I don't want to, I'm, I'm sick of this shit. I don't want to be a Cowboy. But he didn't. He didn't. As he put it, um, in a couple of weeks, I'll be ready. Okay, he's not ready now, so don't get excited. I know people were saying, oh, they're going to put him in this week and everything else. He's gonna No, he's not going to be starting this week. He's not going to be ready. I wouldn't feel comfortable with him being ready right now. And I'm not that I'm saying that I'm comfortable with a rookie starting at left tackle his very first game. I'm not saying that I'm comfortable with that. But um, regardless of him being you know, a 40-year-old veteran that has been there and done that, there's still – not enough time to get ready for a game. You're talking about practice today, off tomorrow, practice Wednesday, which will be a padded practice, Thursday a padded practice, Friday will be basically the recovery day, as the Cowboys call it, Saturday will be a walkthrough, and Sunday is a game. It's going to take some time for them to ramp him up, get him stretched out, make sure that he doesn't get any injuries and so forth. But we are definitely happy to have him here and um, – for all the Eagles, it was comical because we did a live stream early this morning when the news first broke. And I remember seeing um, a tweet saying, B-12 
Be prepared for Eagle fans to descend upon you, telling you how much uh, how bad he is, how he's trash, and so on, which definitely has happened all day. I've gotten the Snickers, the laughs, and everything else. But what's kind of interesting to me is this, is are they trying to convince us that he's no good? Or are they trying to convince themselves? Because I almost feel like thou protest too much. Thou protest too much because... If the Cowboys signed somebody who was terrible, that's what you actually want, isn't it? You want them to look as bad as possible. So I'm thinking that they're actually a little bit worried about Jason Peters. I'll, I'll definitely be talking to my son, Philly 500, on Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, we'll have my son, Rio, will be over here. We'll be talking to Cop Pizzle and Philly 500 and doing a roundtable. So we'll see what they all have to say about it from there. Um but what really actually makes me excited is my defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, I absolutely, positively love the guy. I am worried about Dan Quinn because I feel blessed that we have him again for another year. Um, we very easily could have lost him to being a head coach again. I don't know if he has aspirations of being a head coach again, but what my hope is, my, my, my prayer is, that he wants to be Wade Phillips or North Turner. Those are two guys that had been head coaches but weren't really good ones. They ended up being guys that were truly better as coordinators and being able to, do, to be the genius. Um, Dan Quinn is a guy who you can see enjoys being in the trenches with the guys and mentoring the guys. And you have to think that with all of the players that he has and all the combinations that he can do, that this is exciting as can be. As the head coach, you're that guy that's the go-between between between the players and the ownership, and, you know, you kind of more oversee, kind of like when I was – at training camp, you know, I'm seeing Dan Quinn out there working with the guys and everything else, hands on, just excited as can be. And I'm watching Mike McCarthy coming out the Porter John, you know, pulling up his pants, you know, kind of looking over here, looking over there. You don't get the same feel of being that coordinator where you're down there with the guys and, you know, I, I, you know, that, that, that raw Nathaniel work. But this is what, uh, and I'm hoping I can actually find the press conference because I want to see the whole thing. Dan Quinn on his defensive talent. We got a deep crew, and brother, you ain't kidding about that one. And we're going to roll hard. Uh, reaping rotation coming on the defensive line, linebacker safety to keep players fresh and put them at their best position. And see, this is where Dan Quinn, I played it many, many times, but after the Super Bowl for Seattle's victory, he talked about being fast and physical. He's got fast guys that are very, very physical. And it's crazy because you start forgetting about guys that we have in the rotation. Yeah, we lost Randy Gregory. You know what? Forget Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory is, forget it. Not worried about that. But when you start thinking about all of the players that we can put in there, you go back to the Seattle Seahawks model. And what Seattle had was Cliff Avril was their leading sacker at eight and a half sacks. Uh, Michael Bennett had like six and a half. And then everybody else is like four or five sacks. They had a lot of sacks, but they didn't have a guy, they didn't have one guy that got 20 or something like that. It ended up being that any one of those guys could blow you up. And see, this is where the Cowboys can do so many things because you start thinking about, I, I couldn't believe that the Cowboys actually kept all the defensive players that they did. Because you look at the defensive line, you know, we got a ton of fun. In fact, I'm calling them the Fat Boys Are Back. And shout out to my man, um, Brian Del Rosa, who's working on my image for me. In fact, it may actually be in, and I'll see if I can pull it up while I'm talking here. But the Fat Boys Are Back. When we need to stop the run, all of a sudden we have big guys in the middle like we haven't had in a long, long time. Because you got Tristan Hill who seems to be in that contract year, who is definitely changing the narrative. You know, he's now a year and a half away, or almost two years away from the ACL injury and um, is definitely trying to show up and show off to get that next contract. 
He's three bills. You've got Navelle Gallimore, the Canadian bulldozer, who literally trucked Mike Pouncey, and I still believe the guy who ended up causing Mike Pouncey to say, I need to get out of here. He trucked Mike Pouncey, Pro Bowl center, basically drove him right back in the lap of Big Ben and then proceeded to smother Big Ben. He is fully healthy from the elbow injury that he sustained last year, and he is a guy who's got speed, strength, and he's pushing three bills. Then we got two, not one, but two fat asses in Quentin Bohannon, who's now learned to keep his pad level low, and a very young, raw head smasher in John Ridgway. That right there is everybody there over 300 pounds. Understand, we usually didn't have more than one guy or so over 300 pounds, maybe two. We got four of those guys. But more importantly, those guys can move. Now, if you want to change it up a little bit, don't forget you got Osa in Digazua. He's under 300 pounds, very, very fast, and he's like a ninja with the hands. I mean, he can move. His hands, being a former championship wrestler, he knows how to use his hand to create that separation and to get away from the lineman. But then you also have guys like Terrell Basham, who I, I keep forgetting. I was like, oh, we got Terrell Basham, too, that's in there. We got Carlos Watkins. Carlos Watkins, who last year was the starter. We penciled him in to be the starter. Our team has gotten so deep that he was actually one of the early cuts that was brought back. That, my friends is a great rotation. And when we start thinking about the outside, it's been quiet. You know, Demarcus Lawrence just found out that the Cowboys were underdogs and is not happy about it. Not, definitely not happy about it. The Cowboys are a point and a half underdogs this year. D-Law, for the first time in many, many years, has been healthy throughout the offseason. He's been able to do the captain's workouts, all the OTAs, mini camp, and everything else. You know, he's, he's got his hair, which is more aerodynamic than before. He's ready to go. And typically, he's a great run stopper who demands double teams. Yes, we lost the penalty magnet in Randy Gregory. But how much did we really have Randy Gregory? Randy Gregory, even though he wasn't suspended at all last year, still missed like four games or so. Um three or four games, with injuries, and still had a multitude of injuries, and the, and the, the, the excuse me, not injuries, penalties, and the thing about the penalties he has, typically they're like boneheaded ones, like tackling an offensive lineman. But when we start looking at the young guys that we have, oh my God, Dante Fowler could be this year's J. Ron Curse, because Dante Fowler looked good. He looks rejuvenated. And if you look at what he was doing last year in Atlanta, he wasn't exactly on a very good defense. He was the one guy where basically the team said, well, he's the best player over there. If we stop him, we're going to stop the rest of the defense. And still got five and a half sacks. On this defense where there's so many playmakers and stuff, you can't stop all of them. That's where he'll get his. He will do good. Then you can't forget about Golston, our third-round draft pick last year, who will be fighting in there to get some playing time. Who is coming along? It's only his second year. We can't forget at Dorrance Armstrong, who numbers weren't that far from Randy Gregory as a backup. I believe he had five and a half sacks last year or five sacks. So you start looking at that and saying, yeah, you do have a rotation of those guys. Then you add a freak of nature, Sam Williams. Sam Williams, who is very raw, but the dude is like a raging bull. He's got more power and leverage. He just has to learn how to use the tools in his toolbox, and believe me, his toolbox is full. It's going to take some time for him to understand what he can really do, and when he does, oh, my God. So now you've got all of these guys, and then you can throw in, as a wild card, Micah Parsons, We've seen some things in practice when I was there in Oxnard where they had one down lineman, the nose. Everybody else is standing up. Basham is fast. Flower is fast. D-Law is fast. 
Micah Parsons is fast. You put those guys standing up, and the offensive line comes out, they're going to be looking around like, what the, what are they doing? And they shoot the gaps. You're going to have mistakes, and you're going to have guys, quarterbacks going down for real. So Dan Quinn has to be happy with what he has. And when we were looking at our linebacker room being really, really thin going into training camp, Leighton Van Der Esch seems like he's finally recovered completely from the neck injury. You've got Micah Parsons who will play some linebacker on there. You, of course, sign Anthony Barr, a guy who's been a standout. <clears throat> and then you've got Jabril Cox, who seems to have really come into his own and is further along from the injury than we thought. So that's where we are right now. And I am excited. And we'll have more of this tonight. And I hope I see you there. I'll see you guys soon.